Even if The Richest Man in Babylon was a book published in 1926, up until now it continues to be a classic in terms of savings and financial planning. In this book, the author reminds us of the basic principles that regulate money management, the ones that since then have stayed unchanged through a story that takes place in ancient Babylon. The book relates the feat of Arkad, a young man who works hard as a notary and barely earns enough to survive. Until one day, fate causes him to cross paths with the one who would become his teacher, a rich and very important man in the region who revealed to him the principles of increasing wealth. Arkad takes very precisely his advice, and it is thanks to this that later he would become the richest man in all of Babylon. If you would like to have access to this book, you can hear it on Audible, where you will find a wide range of audiobooks. In the description, I will be giving you a link where you can have a 30-day free subscription and then decide to cancel it if you want to keep a free audiobook. In today's video, we will learn eight rules to acquire, maintain, and increase wealth that are mentioned in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Number one, pay yourself first. The first advice to maintain wealth is that it doesn't matter how much you earn. The first thing you need to do is keep at least 10% of your income. In other words, for every 10 coins that go into our bag, we have nine to spend and will invest that which we have saved in order that it starts working for us. Like that, our bag is going to become larger quickly and we will have more and more profits and investment opportunities. At this point, you are probably wondering, what if what I earn doesn't really belong to me? Yes and no, because to survive we must pay bills and rent if you don't own your own house. Services and shopping also cost us money. Money that represents the hours of our lives we have spent to work to be able to get it. And as soon as we get it, it ends up in the hands of people like big companies or the government. The author made an analogy between expenses and slavery to explain the expenses and why we should pay ourselves first. If you earn $2,000 per month and you pay $600 of rent, it means that you work nine days for your landlord, two days for paying taxes, one day for the insurance, etc. This is what the author means when he says that we are slaves of the system working to pay others. Therefore, it is vitally important to save money and invest it wisely so that it begins to work for us. It might be that 10% is a lot. If you think so, you can start with a lower percentage like three. What matters is to start since in this way, you will begin to acquire the habit of saving little by little. Number two, control your expenses. Surely you are wondering, how can I control my expenses? The money I earn is barely enough. For learning how to control your expenses, it is very important that you can spot where all your money is going. In order to do this, I recommend you keep a record where you can see all your expenses in detail and start seeing the difference between the truly essential expenses like rent, food, healthcare, service payments, taxes, and debts, and the unnecessary expenses of which you can deprive yourself, such as eating out, buying branded products, streaming services, a daily coffee, etc. Since these are simple desires without which you can live perfectly well. Keep in mind that you can always reduce your expenses. You just need to have discipline and control at the moment you make purchases to avoid falling into spending money on unnecessary expenses. Number three, invest your money so it works for you. One of the basic principles of personal finance is that our money must yield us more than the rate of inflation so it doesn't constantly lose its value. Having it in a bank account or under the bed represents a big mistake since your money will devalue year after year and not only that, you will also be losing the opportunity for it to produce more money for you. Once you have accumulated a little money, search for different ways to invest it wisely, make it generate more money and continue reinvesting. Only then will you quickly multiply your savings and as a consequence, you will acquire the liberty to live your life without worrying about and working for others. Number four, protect your treasure. It is very important that before making any investment, meticulously investigate every situation, study and learn about the topic to make sure you can safely claim your profits and earnings. You shouldn't take investments lightly or be seduced by the idea of making a quick buck. A lot of dangerous proposals are dressed up as great opportunities and will come around and you must be careful and informed and ask as many questions as possible before you deposit your money and your trust. I'm not saying that every opportunity you have is fake or a scam. I'm just trying to say that you might as well be realistic and stay attentive and careful and be conscious that every investment represents a risk. 
but it's on you to choose which are the investments that suit you and will protect your money. Because if you are careless, credulous, and naive, you run the risk of losing the money that you have spent so much time and effort collecting. Number five, own your own home. You must make your home a profitable investment. The richest man in Babylon tells us about the advantages of owning your own home. Having your own home is one of the wisest investments you can make. This will work as a great engine to inspire us in the search for our wealth, motivating you to do your responsibilities and earn more money. In addition to reducing the cost of our lives in the medium term, so that we can designate a part of our earnings to live fully and to satisfy our desires. Number six, assure your future. The sixth rule is to secure your income for the future. This is because the natural course of a person's life is from childhood to old age. We must bear in mind that youth is something that does not last forever, and this is something that we cannot change. So what we must do is focus our energy on ensuring a source of income for the future, since the time will come when we will not have the same capacity to produce as when we were young. Some of the ways recommended by the richest man in Babylon is to invest in properties or interest-bearing loans. Number seven, avoid avarice. It's very important at the time of increasing fortune that you learn to cultivate the virtues of patience and perseverance and don't let the desire to have more fortune quickly bring with it avarice that will cloud your good judgment. When avarice takes over your mind, you start to believe things that aren't realistic and you start to ignore the real facts. You must stay lucid and attentive to the truth because sometimes people are opportunists who will take advantage of your work and goodwill. In fact, throughout history, there have been several cases of big scams that promise juicy profits month after month in which people have lost their entire savings. If we look at successful investors like Warren Buffett, we will see that they are very conservative with their investments, preferring to build slowly instead of spending their money on something risky. Shortly, you're better off building slowly than rushing into an opportunity that promises a lot but proves to be risky. Number eight, acquire new skills. The more knowledge we acquire, the more money we will win. This is because business prospers when we are insightful and constantly trying to improve ourselves to be more useful for our purposes. So it's more important to look forward and progress and never stay idle because we will be sidelined. The world will advance in leaps and bounds ahead of us if we don't advance with it and we'll end up left behind. If you are looking to build a life without financial worries, it's imperative that you start by saving. Think about saving money like a soldier. If you invest it correctly, it would work constantly for you. Everything else is strategy to know when to spend and when to invest. Your money must work for you instead of you working for your money. The Richest Man in Babylon is one of the essential books about financial education, being that a lot of books like Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki have been inspired by the classic. Furthermore, it's also entertaining and a fun read. It brings with it the teachings that are still valid to this day. If you would like to have access to this book, you can hear it in Audible, where you will find a wide range of audiobooks. In the description, I will be giving you a link where you can get a 30-day free subscription. And then if you decide to cancel it, you can keep the free audiobook. These were the eight principal lessons of the richest man in Babylon. Tell us what you think about the video. And if you have any suggestions, you can write it in the comments below. We will be pleased to read it. And remember to share this video with your friends to help them with their financial education. We will leave you with other similar videos that might be interesting. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, and activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we upload new content. See you in the next video.